your strength. Hallelujah. It's just like no other.
and the witness that know about the power of the blood. There ain't power in the blood.
you all to get with me and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But if you don't, I'm still okay. Because I got a promise, hallelujah. And with God, a promise is a Hallelujah. Glory to God. And he told me, he told me, he said, you are getting ready to walk into a season called new. And when he announced it, everything around me began to change into new. And I want you to know it ain't over yet.
don't mind getting in the aisle and dancing. He said, you want to see me new by January the 31st.
We certainly honor, praise the Lord, all of our first ladies, starting with Lady and the Chamberlain Bow with us. Yes, yes, one of the women of God, praise the Lord, to my girlfriend, who thanks. They didn't all get out of it, but I'm going to raise the sky. 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 All of our father's children, they thank God for all of you that you're here on this evening. Praise the Lord. I am excited and in anticipation of the mighty word. Praise the Lord from the Someone who is not only a friend, but he is a brother, a man of counsel and wisdom. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, some people won't give you good sound advice from the Lord. Amen. Some of us, we feel like friends that just are yes people. Just whatever, yes, 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 yes. But a, a real good friend, praise the Lord. And they have a statement say, you need to be a good friend or a good mirror, praise the Lord. And it's good if you have both, praise the Lord. And I found this, amen, in such a mighty man of God who is on the move, praise the Lord, amen, taking over the city of Nightdale by force and move us. I had to get out of Nightdale and come on to Wendell, praise the Lord. <laughs> he was a preacher's preacher, amen, a master of the word of God. We are so glad to have him in our midst on tonight, praise the Lord. What we're going to do, praise the Lord, we're getting ready to turn this service into his hands. Praise the Lord. Once I relinquish the mic, man, we will ask you to stand, praise the Lord, until he tells us otherwise. So tonight, we want to present to you our pastor for this evening, praise the Lord, who will have complete charge of this church. Amen. Superintendent Braxton B. Bowles, a senior. Agape International in Jesus. Well, come on, let's give the Lord a hand. Come on, we can do better than that. Let's give the Lord a hand. Come on, give it a hand. 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 Come on, give him your best today because he gave you his best. I know, you know, they, they, they blame me. They accuse me of being touchy feely and touchy feely kind of pastor, and I am. So why don't you get out of your seat and go across the street? Won't you hook somebody to tell them your worst is over and your best just hit your checking account? How about that? Ah!
maybe 18 before we moved over to our new house up past. This way going from my church to home and 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 did not have an inkling that this building was here. But when God has something for you, he'll hide it from everybody else until you show up. Look at your neighbor and say, your next miracle is waiting for you to show up. Verse to be deep and delicious, you ain't got to know Greek and Hebrew, just keep on putting one foot in the front of the other and you want to walk right into the greatest season of your life. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, all you got to do in this season is stay alive. Just keep on sucking in air. Just stay alive and keep on praising him and watch what God is getting ready to do. But I, I give God praise for him. Um, why don't you help me celebrate this man of vision, this man of faith and power? Why don't we stand on our feet all over the room and celebrate, celebrate my apostle, 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 And, and we give God praise to their children. I want to celebrate their children as well. All of their children. And, and, and my girl, she, I don't know when she's going back to school, but I don't see her. She's going back tomorrow. All right. God bless you, baby. That's my girl. Yeah. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. I give God praise for um, my lovely wife. I am blessed to have an amazing wife. is a gift to me. The reason I can be a gift to you is because the gift that God gave me is her. Thank God for her. Amen. She was, a, she is, um, uh, she has been and is the remedy for my low self-esteem. Guys are looking at me when I'm walking um, through campus with her saying, how in the world did he get up? You know, some things just come by grace. Oh, don't, don't. Look at your lady and say, grace is a good thing that you don't deserve. So I give God praise uh, for my wife and my children and to all of my ministers and families. I thank God for you. Why don't you look at your lady and say, I thank God for you. I ain't gonna get it myself. I ain't gonna get it myself. You look good looking, Sam. You look good looking, Sam. You look good looking, Sam. You look like something new is about to happen in your life. Come on, look at him and tell him. You look like something new is about to happen in your life. Come on. Yeah. Oh, I'm feeling now. I say, tell somebody, you look like something new is about to happen in your life. That's why the devil's been kicking the rocks. With no socks because God has something new for you. Amen, amen, amen. And so we thank God. Have a seat, have a seat. Listen, I want to share this real quick, and I'm, I'm not going to preach long because my cowboys are getting ready to pray. They're going to praise for the cowboys. We're going to praise for the cowboys. The stars never come down. He just have to land. <laughs> listen, listen. I have something that I want to share with you, and I'm going to share it with my church too. I want every one of you to get this CD. I want you to get this CD. It's called "Command Your Day with Something Good." It is a prophetic declaration. It will change your morning. It will change your morning. Listen. 
the reason why pastors are so keen on what you do at the beginning of the year is because what you do at the beginning of the year will set the paradigm, the pattern of what occurs during the course of the year. If you start out low, you got to work hard to get yourself all the way back. Uh, my wife was a track star. My wife will tell you that they teach you from before they let you go down around the, uh, uh, the, the track. They teach you for hours on end how to come out of the blocks. And they'll say, go back. And you'll do that for hours, hours upon hours, because they understand how you start is how you will flow. And the devil wants you to get started in this year with a tainted flow. That's why he attacks you in the morning. Okay, I'm by myself. Anybody know that the devil will attack you in the morning? He'll give you anxiety and depression. He'll let your car not crank. Come on, talk to me. He'll let somebody leave a text message on your phone late at night so that you get it first thing in the morning. Come on, talk to me. He'll, he'll let somebody say something crazy on the radio station you're listening to because he wants to catch you in the morning so that you will already be defeated during the course of the day. But if you get the right stuff in your spirit in the morning, you'll be in the place where you say, Oh, will I rise to see me and let God arise in his enemies. I want to share this city with you. I, I, I'm just going to share it with you at cost. I ain't trying to make a whole lot of money. I just want you to have it. It's only five dollars. They'll be either out there or out there uh, after service. I want you to have it. I, I like to sow. I am a sower, so I want to sow this into the life of our pastor, Apostle Scott. I want him to have that. And if you don't mind this one right here. That one right here. And in life, I'm going to have one, but you got to be paid in luck on. Amen. 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 I'm going to judge for this guy. He's going to help me more. Amen. And, and, what, and, and your daughter, her birthday is today. Where is where she at? Where that pretty girl at? Come in. Come in. I want to give you this. Won't you 
look at somebody and say, God said, God said he's, getting he's getting ready to rid you, to rid you of, some of some things that have been plaguing you. I just feel that in my spirit. I don't know who that's for, but I feel that in my spirit. Something been following you from childhood, but God said He's gonna get rid of it for you. Let me just go ahead and read Joshua chapter three, verse one. I'm going to read extensively, so just be patient with me because I believe that our understanding of what we get ready to hear will really set the tone for some things that will take place in your life. Now, pastor's going to come tomorrow. He's going to preach like two worlds coming together. But I, I, I'm coming as his brother and his friend to help set the stage for what God has given him to say for you tomorrow. I know my place. Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 3, verse 1. I'm going to read it out of the Message Bible. If you have an issue with the Message Bible, you'll be all right. <laughs> Joshua was up early and on his way from Shittim with all the people of Israel with him. He arrived at, at the Jordan and camped before a cross crossing camp before crossing over, crossing over, crossing over, crossing over, crossing over. Crossing over. After three days, leaders went through the camp and gave out orders to the people. When you see the covenant, the chest of God, your God, carried by the Levitical priests, start moving. Follow it. Make sure you keep a proper distance between you and it. About half a mile. Can't get too close. Be sure now to keep your distance. Y'all see that? Be sure to keep your distance. Everybody can't be up on the pastor, leader. I want a pastor that I can touch. Well, if you want a pastor that you can always touch, then you don't want God's directions. People get mad because I won't give them my cell phone number. But if I don't give you my cell phone number, that means that I need some distance. If I'm always talking to you, then when am I going to hear from God about you? All right. All right. Why? Why? Is somebody mad already? Make sure you keep a proper distance between you and it about half a mile. Be sure now to keep your distance. Everybody say keep your distance. Keep your distance. Why, why should I keep my distance? And you'll see clearly the route to take. I can't know where to go if I'm up on you. Right. Did you need to say back up off me? Back up off me. You've never been, watch this, on this road before. Amen. Look at somebody say, say, this is a new road. This is a new road. <laughs> That's where my family's from. It's a place outside of Virgo called New Road. All right, this is a new road. This is a new road. You, you've never, you've never, I've never hooked you. You've never been here before. Can I preach and read at the same time? Yes. Okay. You got to understand that that you can't allow um, the devil to cause you to be ambivalent to go forward uh, in the things of God this year because you've never been there before. Because this is a year of the unfamiliar. A lot of you are going to say, I ain't never tried that before. I ain't never, as a matter of fact, when you get up in the morning, you ought to look to try or experience something new. Something that you've never experienced before. Then Joshua addressed the people. Sanctify yourselves. Tomorrow God will work miracles, wonders among you. Joshua instructed the priests, take up the chest 
for the covenant and step out before the people. So they took it up and processed before the people of God. God said to Joshua, this very day I will begin to make you great in the eyes of Israel. Mm. They'll see it for themselves that I am with you in the same way that I was with Moses. You will command the priests who are carrying the chest of the covenant when you come to the edge of the Jordan water, stand there on the riverbank. Then Joshua addressed the people of Israel. Attention! Listen to what God, your God, has to say. This is how you'll know that God is alive among you. He will completely dispossess before you the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hivites, the Parasites, the Gergesites, the, the Amorites, and the Jebusites. Look at what's before you. Look at what's before you. Look at what you have. will pile up in a heap. And that's 
what happened? People left their tents to cross, to cross, to cross. Let the church say cross. cross. The Jordan, led by the priest, carrying the chest of the covenant. When the priest got to the Jordan and their feet touched the water at the edge, the Jordan overflows its banks throughout the harvest. It's during this time of the year, it is always flooded. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it was not the season to cross the Jordan. There was a season where the waters would be low. Can I, can, I, can I help you? Can I help you, Laurie? Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, God is about to bless you out of season. God is about to bless you out of season. Oh, have mercy. Yes. Well, you get ready to do something, somebody's going to take it. Well, this is not the time now. This is not the season for you to launch out. This is not the hour for you to do this and to do that. But I came to let you know that God, so that you know it is God, will oftentimes bless you in a season where you're not supposed to be blessed. Look at your neighbor, give him a high five and say, let him bless you out of the season. I'm going to let y'all sit down in just a second. Just, 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 just. I'm going to preach in a minute. I'm going to preach in a minute. When the priest got to the Jordan and their feet touched the water. The Bible blessed them because the Jordan overflows its banks throughout the harvest. The floor of the water stopped like God said it would. It piled up in a heap a long way off at Adam, a place called Adam, which is near Zarathan. The river went dry all the way down to the Arabah Sea, the Salt Sea. And the people, watch this, cross. Everybody saying the people cross. Facing Jericho. Let me give you the last verse and then we're going. And there they stood, those priests carrying the chest of the covenant, stood firmly planted on dry ground in the middle of the Jordan while all Israel crossed on dry ground. Finally, the whole nation was across. Y'all keep seeing this word, across, across, across the Jordan. And not one wet foot. Now, the pastor was carrying the presence or the vision. Y'all got that? Then when he got in the middle of the Jordan River where it was dry, and the water was rolled back and congealed on one side. Yes. The pastor stopped and let the people walk by. Amen. Nothing blesses the pastor as much as to see the people walk through their opposition yes. on the other side. Yes, yes Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you. He don't want me to be blessed. The devil is alive. I can't. Listen, they'll tell you, they'll tell you, you better not tell me God healed your brother. I'll dance like it's going to stop. You better not tell me you got a new car. I'll jump in it and ride around the church. You better not tell me you got a new house. I'll be riding trying to find your neighborhood. You let your neighbor say, neighbor, I'm so glad that I have a pastor that won't speak the cross over. That won't speak the Amen. Amen. All right, y'all ready to go now? Thank you, Jesus. Let me give you this subject, so that, because you know most of y'all like to have. Hey, little Scott, most of y'all like to have a subject when you get ready to preach. So let me give you this subject. The subject today is I'm crossing over into a new season. Why don't you shake three people by the hand and tell them I'm crossing over into a new season? into a new season. All over the world, people are filled with a myriad of emotions as they are, they fully embrace, embrace, thank you, sir, as they fully embrace this new year. If you're already frustrated, you need to go back and do your first works over again. You ought to still be excited. Look at your name and say, you ought to still be excited. It's a time of the year where we pause to reflect upon the past year Take careful note of things that occurred to include both bitter and sweet. 
while in the throes of reflective contemplation, we are all afforded a moment to strategically plan so that we don't repeat the problematic pitfalls of the past. It is at gatherings such as this that God's people must have merely gather to celebrate the survival of another year. Yes. But it is incumbent upon us to be adequately intentional, don't go to sleep on me now, about what we embrace in the next few fleeting days. As I sit here, as I sat meditating, the Holy Spirit prompted the, me to prepare you for crossing into a new season. Right. And he calls this season new. Oh. Look at your neighbor and say, welcome to your new season. Oh. Mm -hmm. Some of you are excited about a new moment when God wants you to have a new season. Yes. Or a season of new. Tell somebody, I want a season of new. I want to be smelling the new car smell all year long. I still love it when I walk into my house and I say, it still smells new. This moment will, 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 will mark the crossing of one season into the next. And it's essential that we all are ready for this magnanimous moment. This moment tonight is larger than you. Let right. me preach to these people that's about to go to sleep on me. This moment is larger. Now you go to sleep, you know, the Bible says a man fell asleep and broke his neck. That's right. The apostle had to go down and lay hands right. on him. I don't have that kind of anointing on me, so you better stay awake. The crossover is best explained in the events of this narrative, and I'm almost done. All right. And if you are careful, if you carefully consider this text, you will be able to draw parallels between Joshua's exploits in the text and your own past experiences. Now let's build a quick framework. Before Deja, we, we shout new. I know y'all excited about shouting new, 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 but let's build a framework first before we shout that word new. Come on, everybody shout new, okay? Okay, okay, I see y'all not ready yet. All right. <laughs> According to history, we have learned that the children of Israel spent 430 years in slavery in Egypt, where they uh, were subjected to constant physical and mental abuse. They wandered in the wilderness for 40 years, help me, Holy Ghost and had to endure continual changes and shifts in geographical locations and leadership. Yes. During their 40 year sojourn through the desert, the children of Israel were constantly challenged and aggravated by a multitude of adversaries. Now finally, they are gathered at the precipice of their promise and the only thing that stands between them and where they, between where they are and where the Lord has given them is this Jordan River. Yeah. The Jordan represents an insurmountable opposition. Right. Or in other words, it is something that is standing in their way. Lord, help me talk. Mm -hmm. The dilemma is God is requiring of them to cross over something that they can't Away from. The, the, the issue is that they have this, this big thing in their way and God is saying cross over. Because if you stay here, you are uh, you are destined, you are destined to remain in your own situation. But if you want what God has for you, you got to cross through something that has the potential to destroy you. Everybody wants a celebration, but nobody wants to work for it. Everybody wants a party, but nobody wants to pay the bill. Lord have mercy. Everybody wants a celebration. Everybody wants a birthday party. Everybody wants that, that name to be passed in life. But in order for you to get through some things, you, in order for you to get to that, you got to go through some things. And it's required that you cross over. My question is, 
answer to the question that sees the corridors of my cerebral cortex is what's standing between you and your promise. You can never get over what you won't confront. Lord, help me preach it here. You can never pass through. You can never overcome what you won't pass through. It's time for you to confront the issue so that you can cross over into the new season that God has in your life. There are some people and some things that you need God to move out of your way so that you can cross over this Jordan. do not you look at somebody and ask them the question, what is what is it that's standing in your way? Is it toxic associations? My Lord. Is it a negative mind frame? Is it a habit that you don't tell nobody about? Here you go. Lord have mercy. Is it, is, it, is it a disposition? Is it a slant? Is it a prejudice? Is it a pattern? Is it a cycle that keeps recycling you on this side of your opposition? You know what opposition is? An opposition clearly means the thing that opposes you. And so many of us, we, we try to force our minds into amnesia and not face the thing that's in your way. Listen, I came all the way from Zebulun to Wendell to let somebody know that if you can face it, God can free it. Lord, have mercy. Look at your neighbor to the neighbor if you can face it. God can free you from it. I know you were molested. Face it. I, I know you might have been divorced. Face it. I, I know you might have made some mistakes. Face it. Oh, 
Lord. In his favor in life. We can may endure it for a night. But joy coming in the morning. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, if I can't sleep, I'm going to hang out until the morning. Because there's some new mercies. No, 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 no. over for them or us is not an option. Let me say it here. Look at your neighbor, say neighbor. I hate to upset your apple cart, but can't nobody in this room tonight stay on this side of the joint. I'm sorry, but I can't afford to allow you to hang out on the other if I got to drag you kicking and screaming, I love you so much. But you got a good friend in your life. You can be depressed because your heart is broken. They will bust up in your house while you in the bed. Covers pulled over your head with the blinds down. With your head scarf on. And they'll pull you out the bed and run water and throw you in the shower. And say, baby, I you gonna cuss me out, but I can't allow you to stay in the place that you're in. Why don't you pull your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, I'm coming out and I'm coming through. Look at your neighbor and hold that hand and say, neighbor, I'm crossing over. And since I'm crossing over, when I got your hand, I'm pulling you across with me. Come on out of there. I dare you to pull on one Come on over the joy. God is already dealing with your opposition. He's dealing with the place that wants you to try. Come on, no, I wish I had a prayer. I wish you would look at somebody and say, come on over. Yes, we're crossing over one by one. If, if we refuse to move forward, there are three things that we will suffer. Uh, there are three things that we will suffer. Can I help you now? If I help you, say help me, preacher. Uh, yeah. A reoccurrence of your bondage. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, on this side of the Jordan, there is somebody that wants to benefit from your connectivity. Preacher here bows a boy. If you Stay over here and you stay pitiful, dear. There is somebody that wants to benefit from your inactivity. If you stay pitiful, you'll end up being a servant to those that declare that they are powerful. I wish I had a prayer in church in here. But I've been made up in your mind that I can't stay where I'm here. That I've been in this place long enough. of your adversary. You've been trying to get away from your enemies. But now God has opened up the way and you're so unfamiliar with the new that you want to stay on this side of your challenge. Well, let me tell you something. If you stay here, the Jebusites, the Hittites, and all of the Ike brothers will come and Sometimes God will give you the strength to fight, but sometimes God will give you the strength to run. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you got to fight some stuff in life, but sometimes you got to put on your track shoes and run for us. Don't be preaching here. I got on my traveling shoes. Anybody in here? Rachel, do you have on your traveling shoes? I've been in depression long enough. I've been in anxiety and panic long enough. It's time for me to run from my life. Look at your neighbor said, running, running, running. I can't carry. Because guess what? Just like the Red Sea. 
person. Well, y'all don't like that. Y'all didn't watch that. Let me help y'all with something. He said, you can't put, Lord, have mercy, old wine into all the new wine skin. Because it'll burst, it'll spoil. Look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, I got to change my thinking. I know you don't want to say it, but you got to change your thinking. Lord, help your neighbor said, neighbor, you got to change your thinking. You can't think old and get into something new. Lord, I know you never had cheese and fruit before, but try it. I know you never had caviar, but try it. You got to try something new. You got to change your mind if you don't like it. At least you can say, I tried. Some of the folk couldn't move from the old sanctuary to this sanctuary because they couldn't take the fact of expansion. That's our I name, mean, Kingdom Expansion Regal. They can't take expansion. And so what God will do, since you want the new and you want the crossover, he'll remove people that are saying what you want them to say, but their mind, good Lord, have mercy, don't match up with their profession. Oh, Jesus said, you love me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. Yeah, God, you say you got power, but you're denying the power. You got a form of godliness, but you're denying the power thereof. Look at your neighbor, said neighbor, before February, you won't have a couple of people to walk away from you. It's okay. I already started this year. It ain't even the first two weeks yet. I already started. But don't worry about it. Because anything God allows to walk out of your life, He gives new and better to come into your life. We got to learn how to celebrate when things and people leave us. I lost two cars last year. I can't wait for you to see what I pull up in the next. Look at your Get away for new! Yes, sir. We're probably yeah. over Yeshua. Yeah, we gotta shift our behaviors. You gotta shift the way we act. You can't act the same way you acted. Lord, have mercy. You can't go to a five-star restaurant and say, Miss, 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 Miss. Lord have mercy. Do you have some scripts? You can't go. Lord have mercy. To a new place and be have your same old behavior. Look at your neighbor, said neighbor. You gotta change your behavior. Well, this is the way I am. Honey child, brother, cuz, who I promised to give two dollars at the service. Let me tell you this. If you act the same way in your new season, what God will do is allow you to slide back into the same season. I've seen people to go from the projects to home ownership back to the projects. Because you gotta change your behavior. Shake somebody with your hand. Shake it like you're gonna shake it. Shake it like a soul shake. And tell your neighbor, change your behavior. According to the text, Joshua is given the task by God to prepare them for the crossover. Lord have mercy. There is a divine order that you got to face. Am I preaching or y'all sitting here? There's a divine order that you got to embrace if you are going to cross over. Let me say it again. There is a divine order that you have to embrace if you're going to cross over. Let me talk to these musicians. There is a divine order that you have to embrace if you're going to cross over. You can't do what you want to do and expect to do. I used to be a rapper. Look at your neighbor said, neighbor, you can't do what you want to do and expect 
expect the new. Because the devil will often counterfeit what God wants to do. And so you don't have new, you just got different. Look at your neighbor said, neighbor, I don't want different. I just want new. Here's the order. Here's the order. And Joshua said, how are we going to do this, Lord? He said, here's the order. First, you need the box. You need the Ark of the Covenant, which represents the presence. You need the presence of God. If you want new, you need his presence. As a matter of fact, I feel like getting in his presence right now. I wish I had about 15 people. All I need is 15 people to stand on their feet and start clapping their hands and calling on Jesus. That's how you do it. Oh, oh. Thank 
right now. Oh, Lord. Right now, what are the benefits? So the paracles, thank you for being here with me. But what are the benefits of crossing over? Can I tell you the benefits before I get ready to go home? What are the benefits of crossing over? Here are the benefits of crossing over. Number one, y'all still standing. I like y'all. You can conclude this chapter. Yes, sir. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord, I don't care what you do. I just want this chapter to be over. I said it the other day, Lord. I don't care what I got to face. Lord, in 2019. But this thing right here, I need you to bring that to a close. Lord, I have to bring the church in here. Look at your neighbor, said neighbor. If you stay where you are, you'll continue. But if you move forward, God will put a period where the devil been trying to put a comma. This is the moment where God has graced us to turn the page. And I came to let about 15 of y'all know it's time to turn the page. I wish I would do like my grandmother used to do when she was reading her newspaper. And she finished that section of the obituary. She was like, <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, what are you doing? <laughs> Tell I'm turning the page. <laughs> oh, my frustration, I'm turning the page. <laughs> oh, my hurt, I'm turning the page. <laughs> oh, my abuse, I'm turning the page. <laughs> oh, my divorce, I'm turning the page. <laughs> oh, my layoff, I'm turning the page. <laughs> oh, my panic attacks, I'm turning the page. <laughs> oh, my anxiety, I'm turning the page. Yes, <laughs> Bad experience. The credits are rolling. The fat lady has begun to sink. It's time to conclude this chapter. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's time to conclude this chapter. See, some of y'all don't know when to get excited. Because God already started it when he allowed you to cross over from 2018 into 2019. Good Lord. Good children. Farewell. I've been in Georgia, but I gotta go. But before I go, you wouldn't give somebody a high five and say, neighbor, it's over now. Yeah, you made it through the storm. Well, you made it through the rain. You can, you can rejoice and be exceedingly glad because God
into a new thing. But I see a deadline that's been looming over your head trying to haunt you. 
Don't worry about that. God deals with that. Either he's going to give it to you or give you an extension. Don't worry about that. But you got to protect your mind. You got to protect your peace in this season. You can't even let members, whether they're relatives or not, tell you what's true. I say, I'm hearing God. We gotta do what God. We gotta pass over into the future. Man of God, I can't wait to celebrate with you the way I want to. Listen, when I come to the dedication, I'm gonna show it out. I bet you won't nobody give as much as I can. I bet you. I believe in what the stop. My wife know I mean what I say. God's giving you, I see new seeds, new plants springing up in the ministry. I see people coming like never before. But not only are they coming on Sunday, but they're going to get connected. I see almost like strings connected to your coat. People holding on to the strings. They're getting connected to you. Because you need them. people coming in and saying, Pastor, what is it that you need? Yeah. Right. I ain't talking about tax season blessings. Yeah. Yeah. People are yeah. perpetually wealthy. Yeah. I, hear this, I hear this statement saying to you, I don't know why I'm doing this. I hope somebody's recording it right now. I don't know why I'm doing this, but I'm going to do this for you. I like it. The only way you won't be blessed is if you stop talking. Right. You gotta continue to talk. Right. Yes. And you need to be unashamedly who you are. Because we need who you are. Yes. I want everybody from the way to church to jump on their feet and give God a praise because you're entering through the greatest season of your life. I don't want to. I don't want to ask for much. I know the March first Sunday is Bill Sunday. Everybody has got to give. He didn't ask me to do it. He didn't say nothing about raising no offering. He didn't put that demand on me. But because of my apostolic anointing, I got to ask you for a seat. I poured out. How many of your life has changed right now because of the word? I ain't saying because of the word. I say it just because of the word. I want everybody to get a twenty dollars seat and come bring it to the altar right now. It's a crossover seat. Get a twenty dollars seat. I need to get a hundred dollars from the musicians. Amen. <laughs> Just drop it out there. Drop it out there. Just come on. Drop it. Drop it. Drop it. Drop it. Don't go too far, bro. Don't go too far. I just need him to do that. Come on. Drop it. Come on. Come on. Get that $20 seed. And drop it. Come on. Listen, man. Come here. Come here, man. There's an anointing on your life. God is getting ready to change some things for you. There's some opportunities he's going to open for you. And you say, Lord, whatever you, whatever you do for me, I still want to stay connected. He's going to do it. I see something with that about a computer. I see something connected with a computer to being able to work remotely. There's an opportunity that's going to happen. And I see your own business. Yes, sir. I don't know what you do. We don't talk much about what you do. We talk about church and Pastor Scott when we see each other. Yeah, your ears ought to be itching and burning, but we talk about you. This man, God, loves you. And he always talks about his best. He always represents his church everywhere he is. No matter how much foolishness is going on, He's a representative. God says He's opening up a door for you. And He's getting ready. I 
see his family. I see him bringing some resolve. It's almost like a completion of things. Mm. So to tell you that he brings some things to an end and some things to completion. Mm. He said, get ready for it. I hear him asking the question, how long will you suffer with what I've already resolved? He's already dealt with it. It's time for you to get up and move on. Gotta move on. Gotta cross over. If this word didn't bless anybody else, it blessed you. There are about three people, three more people. You need to get something. You didn't have twenty dollars, but you need to get something. Come to the altar right now, because there's a miracle waiting on you in this altar. Move now. Move now. Move now. So three people that didn't move. I need you to move. Don't, don't go nowhere. Don't go nowhere. I see God blessing you in stages this year. He's going to start from the inside out. Everything that God does for you, you need to call your pastor. Run it by him. He might not understand a thing about it, but just run it by him. And say, I just, this is what this means, Pastor. I need you to pray for it. Because you were designed to be wealthy. God said, tell him I'm going to bless him because I can trust him with him. There's an idea that God is birthing in your spirit. You can't do it. Doesn't matter where you're from, how much of your degree you completed or did not. You can do it. This is your season of the God told Abraham, I leave you. This is my benediction. God told Abraham that everyone you feel. You know what he told me? That's right, that's right, Pastor. 
Come on, I got to let you go. Because if I don't turn it out right now, if, if, if I don't turn it out right now, something is going to happen. We are sitting on an explosion right now. Somebody is literally going back home to a new. Somebody is literally going back home to a new. I don't know what that means for you, but you're going back. You left a situation and things were in disarray. But the Lord said, when you turn your hand on that knob and walk in that door, you are walking into a literal new. Hallelujah. So I got to let you go. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit bless through the Bible henceforth now and forever in Jesus' name. For somebody tell them I'm crossing over into the blue.